Welcome back to the podcast. Mmm. Mm. Oh, saucy. Mm. Mm. Nothing sexier than a trifles podcast. Oh yeah. Man, I, I have been I have been really, really dadding it up recently. I mm. know I, I normally do, but uh, <laughs> recently much more so than normal because uh, guess what happened to our downstairs bathroom? The oh my god, wait, are you going like to have a plumbing it. story too? Because I also have a plumbing story. Yeah, we had some leaky pipes. Oh, uh, we baby. Had, uh, the pipes uh, run in the ceiling uh, downstairs in, uh, in our bathroom and there was a, a leak. There was a, like, a, like, a, like a pinhole leak on the bend of the pipe yeah which uh just got worse and worse over time uh so much so that the water started uh leaking across the the top of the ceiling and then down into uh like the light switch and uh trip the power and uh my family were like freaking out they thought the house was going to catch fire and stuff (laughs) and you could see water pouring out of where the light switch was right so we had to get an emergency plumber out who had to like cut a whole bunch of holes in the ceiling and then uh, only to tell us that where the pipe bends, like it's it's sort of like tucked in between the wall and the joist. So he, he can't actually access it to fix it. So he's just had to cut the pipe. So our, our downstairs bathroom is just completely out of action right oh now. Oh my goodness. Cannot use it. No oh sink, goodness. no toilet. And we're probably just going to have to renovate the whole damn thing because now is the best time to do it, right? Mm, it was yeah. looking a little bit dated. Lewis, I don't yeah. know if you remember, it has those tiles with like ducks on them and stuff like that. Like, looks like yeah. somebody did a really good job of it, like in the early 80s, but like it's time, right. to, it's time to spruce it up now. It's a quiet little room and you, you easily forget about these things. You know, it's the downstairs yeah. loo. How you go in there, it's very functional. It's not yeah, a room exactly. that you really show off. So yeah, no. it, it, yeah, those are the kind of ones that get dated. But yeah, time yeah. for a time for a, a renovate. That's right. So now we're uh, we're in the uh, in the throes of a full on. They got to strip the tiles. They got to do some plumbing. We got to get some electrics in. We want to put some new flooring in, down in Have there. It's only a little a tiny new display. Have you picked out anything new? No, I think we're just going to like whites and grays, you know, like just make it look kind of modern, like maybe like a hotel bathroom or something like we don't really, Mm. we're not too fancy, you know, like we're not, uh, we don't need to like do any, we don't want to like paint a mural in there or like do like the Sistine Chapel on the ceiling or anything like that. We just want uh, (laughs) something, something that looks clean and functional. It's it's big enough for you to stand it and close the door and that's it. Yeah, exactly. It It doesn't need to be too fancy, right? Yeah. So. But right. uh, but we might get, uh, we we're thinking about maybe getting a, a corner sink, which uh, hmm. is pretty fancy, actually, with a little cabinet uh, underneath it and maybe even putting a shelf up in there too. So, oh. Oh my God. And if we put a shelf up in there, you know what I'm going to get? I'm going to get one of those little like pencil pot fake plants with like a vine that got like that that goes down to you know make spruce it up a little bit make it look Mm. like holy shit there's there's plant life in this in this bathroom so boy i got some big ideas certain stuff i've got a a much smaller problem but a very annoying one that like in a way i wish it were a bigger problem because i will basically need to do this myself it's too small a job to call someone out to do right uh because it'll either be they'll be like i'm not doing a job that small which is fair or it would cost a fortune because they'll charge, you know, for the full hour. Here's the problem. We had a new tap fitted about six months ago to the kitchen sink. And right. it's a really nice tap. But the is problem it one is, of those one that bends and like you can take bits off of it and like use it like a shower hose and stuff? It's like? exactly that kind, yes. Holy so the, it's a really, really good tap. Um, hands down, best kitchen tap I've ever owned, right? Easy. Right. But we have a big, <laughs> one of those sort of Belfast sinks, big sink. Mm-hmm. With a with a draining board on one side that runs over the, the kitchen counter and this the, the tap is there on the left hand side of the sink. And directly beneath that draining board to the left of the sink is the dishwasher. And it's a fitted dishwasher. It's fitted into the kitchen unit. Yeah. So the tap is behind the dishwasher. And getting to it, there's a tiny little bit has been cut out of the wooden surface inside beneath the sink, so you can get to the tap. But it's extremely awkward and you have hardly any space and you can barely fit a hand in there. And I've got in there with my torch and the, the, the tap is now loose. Like the whole thing is jiggling around in its fitting and in the sink. And there are these long screws with these hexagonal bolts right. that are sort of up uh, that you have to tighten those up underneath to hold right. the tap in place. Now my mum, bless her, every time she comes to stay, I swear to God, all right, no cap, 
she will break something in the house. She's very heavy handed for an old lady. I don't know how she manages it, but she's broken the shower like every time she's come to visit. She regularly breaks taps. I don't know what the fuck she's doing, but she does it every time. The tap Isn't there is like, now don't they loose. have like a dainty old like lady school that she could go to to learn That's, how to yeah. be less heavy handed? She's, it's like having the Hulk over to stay. You know, this tap is rock solid. My mum's here for literally 10 minutes and the tap is loose. I'm like, mum, what have you done? It's like, well, the tap's loose. I was like, it so wasn't just loose. just out on your taps. Yeah. I was like, it was not loose until you t started using the tap. Like, what have you done to this tap? So I, I can't get in there to tighten it up. So I've ordered something called a tube wrench, mm -hmm. which is like a long tube that mm -hmm. you fit over the screw and then over the bolt and tighten it and it should work in a tight angle. If this doesn't work, I don't know what I'm going to do. That's going to work for sure, by the way. Well, I fucking I know, hope so. I know what you're talking about and that, that'll do the job. Right, but here's the problem. I can't get flush under the tap. No. Imagine it's slight, it's about just a few centimeters in. So I'm gonna have to hope that I can get this thing up under there. It's, it's gonna be a nightmare. It's gonna be an absolute nightmare. Are you, when you're getting under there, are you wearing jeans without any underpants on so that you can Absolutely. ensure that you're uh, displaying as much crack as possible? Because I'm laughing I feel as like... a plumber, yes. Right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know what the problem is then, because like it, sa it sounds like you're doing everything that a normal plumber would do. Right, exactly. But when the guy fitted it, he was a professional plumber, obviously. Yeah. He was cursing and swearing the whole time. He was like, this is a fucking nightmare. Yeah. And he was like, if I can't get this done soon, I'm going to have to take the whole fit of dishwasher out and they never quite go back in right. It's a nightmare. He said, oh, you really, really, ha I really, you're going to have to cross your fingers and hope I can get this done. And luckily he was able to do it, but it was clearly a massive, massive struggle for him. Oddly enough, he was just a regular looking plumber, but he had perfect fake teeth, like wow. glowing white. It was so, so surreal. And when he Porcelains. finally got, got it, yeah, like, but they were like, they're so white. It's it's like the whitest paint imaginable was the color of his They're teeth. They're probably like bathroom tiles. He'd like, <laughs> <to> <laughs> yeah, right. down. like enameled teeth. It was so strange. Anyway, chaps, uh, I don't know how you feel about doing a ma mailbag episode today because we're a little bit behind. I've got quite a few. He's got his emails bag is bulging. Whatever. Go it's for it. <laughs> <laughs> and Lewis just right, doesn't geez. give a fuck. Oof. He's like, whatever. Just you hit right. me. I well, just want to listen. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> no, I'm 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 down for whatever. I'm I'm right. easy this morning. That's I've, a nice I've done way nothing of saying all week. So I've been ill. I'm so. down for whatever is better than whatever. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, ah. this is from uh, Tanesh from uh, Singapore which is, I was there uh, just last week. Yeah. Um, so he said he's a uh, Singaporean, he's really enjoyed TI and all the rest of it. Uh, so got some interesting information about Singapore to share. You, might, you guys might not know this, I didn't know all of these. There is a racial quota imposed on all government housing so that if the quota for Chinese people in a building has been filled, no more Chinese people can live there and it's only open to other races. I thought that was quite Ooh, interesting. That As a is government interesting, policy. yeah. Uh, you can get it fined for littering Drinking slash being noisy past 10.30 p.m. Bringing durian fruit onto public transport, because it's very smelly. Being naked in your own home, if someone, I guess, can see you through a window or something. And not flushing public toilets. Those are all finable offenses. You can get fined for being naked in your own home if somebody can see you? Apparently so. Yeah. Crazy. I'm wow. naked in my own home. Well, not now. as often as I'd like to be, honestly, because I've got lots of kids. But Yeah. Um, as often as it's If feasible. it weren't for them, I'd be naked all the damn time. Like, right. Uh, but you'll get a around, fine in Singapore, mate. Because you know? over here, you're entitled to privacy in your own home. And unless you're standing in the window, jiggling it around, if someone peers through a window and sees you, that's on them. Yeah. That's on them. But that's I, what I, I'm that's a curtain closer. Figure. I'm a yeah. curtain closer. I am as well, so. but I'm a curtain closer, but I'm also of the mind that if you're looking and you see something you don't want to see, shouldn't have been looking. You know? Shouldn't have been looking. If you've I'm got in to my go own house. Way, Yes, I'm fully erect standing at the window, <laughs> but that's your problem and that's not mine. That's your problem, buddy. Yeah. Uh, you uh, To control traffic, if you want a car, you first need to purchase a certificate of entitlement, which is a thing that allows you to buy a car and usually costs more than the car itself. And then you're only able to keep the car for 10 years before it has to be destroyed and scrapped. How about Jesus. that? Jesus. A lot of the land around the coastal areas in Singapore is reclaimed land made from our rubbish. So they just chuck all their rubbish uh, close to the land, I guess, pack it down and, and that, there's your land. You're just living on a bunch of old rubbish. Uh, and the Marina Bay Sands Hotel cost four and a half billion pounds to build. How about that? Holy cow. Holy Thank crap. You, that's a, wow, that's really? Yeah. 
That's insane. That's uh, half of what Elon Musk is going to pay in uh, taxes this year, according <laughs> to him on Twitter, if you believe well, any of that. Oh, so just That's quickly. the one with the boat on the top. Yes. Uh, I oh, saw it, that, but I didn't, I didn't go that, up it. My friend's son's fan cool stayed in hotel. it. He stayed in it for a couple of days after the event to see what it was like when his, his, uh, his wife came out. And what did he uh, think? Well, he, he posted, a, posted about it on, on, um, on Instagram. It looked fucking amazing. It looked absolutely nice. fucking amazing. So, nice. yeah, shout out. Uh, can we just talk about the whole Big $8? Or just $8? Shout out. No, no, just shout out. Right. Um, can we just talk about the $8 for a Twitter verified thing very quickly? Yeah. Okay, what is the I've not heard this. Sorry. Right. So Elon Musk has he initially said that if you want a, a Twitter verification mark, it's twenty bucks a month. And anyone who wants one can get one if they pay twenty bucks a month for it. Yeah. Right? Stephen King, oddly enough, on Twitter called him out. And Elon Musk then said, How about eight dollars? And the price is now <laughs> the price is now eight dollars. Yeah. So I, I would have come back. If I was Elon Musk, I would uh, and I know he's a bit like like uh, this as well, like uh and, and shouldn't be, but I would be the same. I so if if Stephen King called me out on something, I would say, How about eight dollars and also you write better books? I would I would I would be brutal with it. <laughs> okay. I would just be like, fuck you, Stephen. I mean he has <laughs> none of your business. One of the, one of the most successful business. Authors. <sighs> yeah, I, know, business. I, I know. I'm not saying I dislike his book. I just like, you know, just as like uh You just chuck it out there. I would just chuck it out. Like even I if I loved his books, which I, honestly, like I can take them or leave them. Like yeah, it, yeah. I've read some and like the ones I have read I like. Stephen but. King is seventy five years old, one of the most prolific writers in the history of anything. He's written like like a hundred books, right? Yeah, he's enormously and successful. Hugely, hugely famous. But regardless, I don't think that him and Elon should be going back negotiating. It's ridiculous. Back no. and forth on I would just say something like, if I own Twitter and I could just say whatever the hell I, I to like. Two enormously rich people yeah. fucking I would saying, just actually oh, say, maybe I sh- maybe fuck you, off, I sh- Stephen. Maybe I'll pay, pay less. Like, so what? Bickering like, over eight bucks. I mean, but, but so the, the issue is that he said, that the whole po- this is Musk. He said the whole plan was to remove the lords and peasants system. Right. That's what he said. Now, first of all, a lot of people that have this check mark are not rich. They're just someone of of public interest, shall we say, a journalist, for example, or yeah. a published author, or a politician, or something like that. And the reason to have it is not some sort of medal of honor. Right. It's because there's fake versions of you out exactly. there. Exactly. And this is and, how you can guarantee this is, is the person. And Twitter is pretty shit at shutting them down. Exactly so right. So it's, uh, it's but, but to stop it's the parody just accounts to say, and stuff this getting is that confused person. with the real ones. Exactly right. And early on, certainly for me- sick of there being me, too many lords on Twitter. He wants to be the only lord, <laughs> then collect his taxes from the peasants. I mean, yes, come on. That's him- the thing. It's a guy who's a literal billionaire. I, I believe if he's the richest man in the world, bemoaning Twitter's lords and peasants system. This is a billionaire, a multiple billionaire complaining, oh, it's all just lords and peasants. All right, give your money away then, chum. Give it all away if you want to even the playing field. What are you talking about? He clearly bought Twitter just to fuck with people. And I have a feeling that when he says lords and peasants and he's all up in the whole blue check mark thing, it's because a lot of people with blue check marks tend to be like more liberal, calling out people like Elon Musk for his bullshit. And he doesn't want it anymore. And now he owns it and he's thrown his toys out of the pram. It's, it's laughable. It's the most laughable thing. And if you want to see Twitter destroyed, he's going about it a, a, the best way possible. By just fucking ruining it. It's yeah, a lot of silly. people. A lot of people are saying they're going to leave the platform. Well, the issue is where are they going to go? Yeah, I mean, loads. Of, don't listen. Don't email me in with suggestions. I've I've heard about your mastodons and all the rest of them. If you take a huge group of users and say, "Oh, there are other platforms," you're going to diffuse all those users into nothing. And although people can complain about Twitter and the circle jerking and all the rest of it, it does serve an important purpose. I don't like the fact that journalists will have an entire article that is just fucking quotes from Twitter. That can fuck off. But that's lazy journalism. That's not Twitter being a problem. That's journalists being fucking lazy. Some of them. So I think so, the, the, the attack on it is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's, it's, it's fascinating, right? Because the, there was a thing recently where Elon had this, obviously, this big court battle with Twitter, right? And he had to put all of his WhatsApp messages into as part of the lawsuit they were yeah. sequestered or yeah. whatever. And you could search them and look through w- what he was saying. And this is one of the things that he was saying in those things uh, with some, he's basically got a series of mates that are kind of like yes men. 
Yeah. Um, on on WhatsApp and various 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 of his friends who were who were who were clearly looking for either a handout or a a a, fu- a job. Yeah. You know, as, as the fucking CFO of some of one of Elon, Elon's new ventures. And you know they're full of like this kind of you yeah you know you put me in boss and I'll I'll really sort this get these guys out or I've got had a great idea for 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 tw- how to monetize your your Twitter once you get it you know and 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 it's kind of like you know people are constantly pitching him stupid ideas and and stuff I mean and he's talking to them as if they are his best mates and maybe they are but I, it all just feels like it's like one like he's planning on on monetizing twitter in a weird way that uh, and it's not the f- it's i think what was one of his suggestions was that you could pay to like send out a, a, a dm to everyone who is following you right. right so if you were like a a big if you were like pringles or whatever um you could pay i don't know whatever however much it is 100 quid to to dm all of your followers oh, and so God. they all get like a little dm with an advert from you stuff like that like oh you know all these little cool ideas where you could monetize the platform in in ways that are more personal it's like a it's like oh you know they're personally getting in contact with me um it's yes dark. i i don't know how twitter is really i, I mean it, it's a, i i think it's a really funny platform it's all based on who you follow, and you know, it, it's sort of like imagine if it was Reddit, which is essentially what it is. It's like you know, you can follow anybody. It's all public and all the rest of it. Yeah. But instead of just having categories, you have specific users, and you just follow them. That's all it is. If Twitter is annoying to you, you're following the wrong people. It's that simple. Unfollow the ones that are annoying you, and follow the ones that you like, and pr- problem solved. It's like picking up newspapers that you have no interest in reading and being infuriated by the headlines. Stop reading them. Read something else. Anyway, rant over. Apologies. Back to the so, bag. Yeah. Back uh, to the eight bag. Eight pounds to be verified. Eight pounds to be or, verified. Or twenty pounds. Or twenty pounds. Yeah. Laughable. Depending on how things go with the uh, with the or... Stephen King negotiations. <laughs> Whatever. I I don't feel like the richest man in the world is a good person to set these uh, arbitrary no, it's numbers. Stupid, As, really and it stupid. seems like he doesn't. Isn't. No, he doesn't even know. Yeah, he might take. He up. might take your ass to Mars one day. So um, get your you know. ass to Mars. Get your ass to oh, Mars. I'm uh, good. I don't is, need to go. I've seen The Expanse. This is an email from, from Henry saying that he was listening to our podcast. Uh, when he, ha- he was actually listening to Lewis's feature on the Comfort Zone podcast, whatever that is. I haven't heard of that one. Oh, yeah. And he crashed his car. Um, oh. The cars are right off. He's okay. He's wondering whether he's owed compensation. Henry, uh, eight bucks, mate. I'm gonna, we'll give you eight bucks. <laughs> Make it 20. <laughs> 20 My bucks. name is John Grisham. I demand <laughs> 20, uh, $20. Grisham. I hope you're okay. My He's dude. all right. And uh, I'll, get, I'll get Brian and Kirsty to, to chip in. Oh, it's that. It's Brian and Kirsty's podcast, of course. Wait, what? Mm. So, what? Uh, what but what? Uh, how did the podcast cause him to crash? It was incidental. He was, was, uh, was he was so he was just comfortable <laughs> getting drowsy, the and then yeah. uh, they drove his car off uh, a cliff. He just went over. That's something good wet. though. We should put a warning on it. You yeah, know. do not listen to this podcast whilst driving. You may become. This too is so boring. It will make you fall asleep. This is from Jay, um, who would like me to say this in my Australian accent. So apologies to any Australian listeners. Uh, <clears throat> I was thinking about weird things my dad always said. One of them was Ted. Ted fucked in the head. Every time someone with the name Ted was mentioned or was on TV. Another one was every time someone asked what we were eating for a meal, he said shit sandwich. Whenever he was asked what he was doing, he'd say, I'm mowing the lawn. What does it look like? And sitting around like a jar of stale piss was another for someone being useless. I recently found out he got a lot of these from his father, and now I find myself saying a few of them. And his question is, do we have any that we say? That's from Jay in Melbourne. Right. Do we have any sayings that you have come from your family, and now you find yourself saying them... One uh, without really any thought. One one that I was uh, I was I was surprised came out of my mouth the other day was uh, when I was uh, dealing with uh, my kids around bedtime, and one of them was trying to like say 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 something had happened or what or whatever, but like basically um, you know just taking the piss you know before right. before bedtime. Yeah. And I turned around and I said, you know what? I was born at night, but it wasn't last night. And that, and my parents used to say that all the damn time. I can't believe I said it as well. 
<laughs> That's funny. And that must have been, it sounds like an old one, right? Like I think oh, their yeah. parents must have said it to them as well, but that was That's a, a good that one. was a that was a fairly common one because me that and me and one. my brother were always kind of like, you know, doing the same, Te- trying, yeah, to, trying like, to pull a fast one. Trying to pull a fast one and uh my parents were always on to us sort of thing. Oh, that's so, funny. Yeah. My my mum always says many a mickle makes a muckle. Well, mm. and I I don't really know what that means. Well, it could mean anything. Oh, yeah. Anything so, you need it to mean. It, it's like my kids will ask me a question sometimes and I'll just say, "Well, many a mickle makes a muckle." And they'll be like, "What?" That's it. It's just a way of saying. I, I guess well, the it, context, though. I don't know what it I mean, you might means. Have, you might as well have just grunted, I suppose. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. many a mickle makes a muckle. I don't know if it's a northern <laughs> saying, but it sounds northern. Well, many a mickle makes a muckle. That's what I always say. <laughs> Northerners, write in and let us know if that is a northern saying. <laughs> oh man, yeah. yeah. I, I, I think we. I think I think I do do that. I just don't know what it is off the top of my head, and. Um, I, I'm sure it's unconscious too, but also I, I just try and avoid saying, I don't know, like the same things. I don't know. I, I don't like those. If I was that guy, I think I'd get sick of saying the same shitty little yeah. anachronistic things every day. Yeah. You know, yeah. those little Like those it little is what it is. Made. That's uh, one. That's, that if I was that Australian say. dad, I'd, it is what I'd be it is. sick of saying that. That you know, I'd it's like just to... sort of a lack of imagination. Yeah, you know, find a new way to to to, to say something. Just uh, come up with a new one every time. Uh, stretch your brain a little bit. I think uh, you know, rather than let those uh, that part of your brain become solidified and ossified uh, with these sayings, uh, flex it. Come up with something new. Yeah. What? What? There's some other like uh, some like what's what's good for the what's good for the for the goose is good for good the gander for the goose. What's good for the goose? The 1969 film, a comedy <laughs> slapstick comedy, starring Norman Wisdom and Sally Greason. Oh, Norman Wisdom! What's good for the goose is good for the gander. That's what I like to say. Oh man, yeah. Norman Wisdom. Oh yeah. wait, that wasn't Norman Wisdom. That was George Formby, I think. Uh, I always used to get George. F- I used to get George Formby and George Foreman mixed up. George, George Foreman is a boxer. George Formby played the. The banjo or whatever. Was he, the ukulele. Uh, George Foreman was a boxer who now does grills. He makes yes, he, indeed. He makes his own grills now instead. Named all his kids George as well. That's what happens when you get hit in the head for a living. Yeah. Uh, all right. This is from Jacob uh, from Scotland. Said that uh, I was driving around delivering parcels for Big Jeff. That's Jeff Bezos. Just a normal rainy day in the dark kingdom of Scotland until I listened closely to what's being said on the radio and realised they're speaking about Ti. No way. The international. Yeah, on Radio 1. He says, the lack of knowledge and pre-written script was hilarious. The highlight for me was, Pro Team Tundra Esports has just won the Defense of the Ancients action video game tournament, uh, which is a, a good wow. way of putting it, I guess. But yeah, that's it. Sure. That's the whole story. Thanks, Jacob. Man. Nice. That's, that's great that it's crossing into I'm the glad, mainstream. Yeah. It's making, I mean, the email it's itself, headway, yeah. not interesting, but the, the idea that uh, Tundra are, of course, based in London. They're a UK-based uh, uh, esports org. And actually, the owner is the son of the guy that owns AFC Bournemouth football team, Maxim Demon. And I met him at the after party and asked him if he knew my mate, who's the accountant at the club. And he said he did. There you go. It was a good laugh. Oh. took a picture with him. God anyway, damn. this is from... Uh, oh, I'm not going to say the name yet. I wanted to briefly talk about CPUs right. and some of the differences between them, specifically Intel chips. Now, this is actually quite interesting. I didn't know this. And we I think we were talking about processors the other week. I know we talk about the, the, the most powerful processor in the world, the Pentium, quite often. Yes. But this is about some different ones. Firstly, the new 12th and 13th generation Intel chips, oh, this bit's quite boring, blah, 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 very blah, blah, blah. The difference in the number of cores and the naming convention boils down to the manufacturing process of the CPU die itself. In essence, Intel is striving to manufacture all i9 chips or i9 rated chips. But because the manufacturing process is so delicate, the smallest flaw or imperfection will render some circuitry bad so they don't pass the i9 standard test. If that happens, the manufacturing process will intentionally reduce functionality of this particular CPU in a progressive manner until it passes the next benchmark of tensing, reducing cores and caches, etc. So you go from the i9, the i7, the i5, and the i3. So this is basically yield management, a big part of the semiconductor making process, a better way to get a useful part as to, to turn it into an inferior product that you can still sell and make profit on rather than throwing it away and getting nothing. I thought that was quite interesting. 
Now, yeah. they, they aim for the very highest level processor they can. And if it doesn't quite get there, because they basically, it's, I mean, it's, it's so, it's such a delicate process now. They sort of grow these things in this vat of chemicals, don't they? It's almost impossibly skilled work and ridiculously close. So if you don't quite get there, you'll sell it as a slightly lesser processor. There's always going to be a market for slightly cheaper processor. That makes sense. And if you can guess the name of the guy who emailed this in, uh, be pretty funny. His name is uh, Bill Gates. Elon. No. Nope. Uh, Elon uh, Gates. Mr. Nope. Chips. It's Bill- Chip. His name is Chip. Chip. <laughs> His Chip. name is Chip. There we Chip go. Chipperson. <laughs> Chip Chipperson <laughs> McMicrochip. That's <laughs> my native <laughs> determinism at work uh, there. Chippy McRam. Chip circuit board. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Intel. <laughs> Sounds like a, uh, a fir- one of those virtual helpers. Yeah. Uh, Hi, I'm Steve Chip McChipperson Intel. Can I help you? It looks like you're trying yeah. to fix your CPU. Uh, this uh, looks this like line... your sink has come loose due to your mother manhandling it, grandhandling it, maybe. Grandhandling, too, too God, yeah, that's a that is that is it. She's grandhandling. Good God. Uh, this is from Sam, a uh, teacher and biker based in Sheffield. Right. Uh, and he's got a question for us. Uh-huh. Would you guys say that having an audience slash fan base has affected your ego? Not that any of you seem egotistical, he goes on to add. No, I would say for me, no. Um, like uh, every once in a while, I, I I will get recognized by somebody who has watched me stream or listen to the podcast or whatever. And every time it happens to this day, uh, I, I in my mind, I'm like, oh, shit, yeah, maybe somebody would recognize me sort of thing. Right. I, I go about my my normal day normally, like I always have, you know, like I don't I don't leave my house and think like I'm getting papped and you know what I mean? <laughs> like I'm not I don't I don't feel like I have any ego about it whatsoever. Like it, yeah. it died. I don't think about it at all and uh it, it's not like uh it hasn't really like affected my day-to-day life i think it, because like uh because of having a family and stuff like that you know like I just, exactly i don't consider I, I, myself be- somebody who is noteworthy in any way <laughs> like uh until somebody comes up to me is like oh hey th- you know i watched your stream and then you're like oh shit yeah that, that's really good and yeah. then two minutes later i've forgotten about it you know what i mean like it's it's nice though. Yeah. I think it's good. I think it's good to be. I think with like me, that. whenever someone meets me in the street, I'm like, oh, instantly I'm like, oh no, I haven't done my hair. I haven't dressed up. I haven't worn anything. I'm wearing shitty clothes. I've just, because at every time I think, oh, I wish I, I really ought to start making myself look nice just in case someone wants to take yeah. a picture with me. But then I don't. Um, yeah. So every single time I make no effort. I think, but I think that shows a lack of ego. In all honesty, because if you did give it, you know, you wanted to look uh, your absolute best in all the pictures and be like, I've got to look fabulous, then I, th- I think you would care. I think the fact that you see it as just another part of your daily life that might come up, but don't plan specifically around it shows a, a lack of ego. I think that's. I do amazing. feel bad though. I, I, but then again, I, I'm, uh, at the same time, I'm like, there's already a, everyone's got terrible pictures of me. So uh, uh, it's not going to make a difference if there's one more. I've lost any kind of yeah. <laughs> control <laughs> over the. I, uh, I, I, <laughs> funnily enough, when I started message, streaming yeah. more, I started caring less because I, I got to the point where I just figured I'm on screen for everybody to see for like eight hours a day. And sometimes right. I forget I'm even streaming. So, like, yeah. I'll just be picking my nose or like, you know, I'll have like some food on the side of my mouth or like I'm picking my teeth. Sometimes I sneeze and it's a messy one in my hand and I forget that people can see me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. And you just figure, yeah. well, they've seen all that, so I got nothing else to hide, you know? Like, uh, they might as well just live in my house. Like, you've, you've seen all my bad habits, you, you know, like, you know what I'm like sort of thing. So, it's like, whatever. You can't really have much of an ego about it, right? Like, Here's a question. How often do you guys fart when you're streaming it's alone? Oh, and and how do you disguise it? Oh, I don't. I just I let rip. Okay, I'm I'm Fair. I'm uh, I'm I'm grateful for a big ripper as well because uh, the thing <laughs> is I sit down a lot, so there is there is the uh, there's a buildup. Yeah, there's a a big buildup sometimes, and it's a real big relief. So if if it's ripping and it's making noise, I'm I'm pretty happy actually. What I've found is that because I don't spend a huge amount of time out and about. When I'm at events, I, I, I don't fart because I'm around other people. I, I try not to, you know, you I'm, hold I'm not in. one of those people. Yeah. And then I'm fucking so bloated and gassy. Yeah. When I finally get into privacy, it's like someone's opened the end of a balloon. And it's just going. Yeah. Well, I'm like that after a flight. 
because like flights a big one for you me. Gotta yeah, hold, yeah. You got to hold them in. I find like events and stuff like that now. I just fart, and if somebody even like calls <laughs> me up on it, I'll just say, "Ah, uh, wasn't me." Like, you should be lucky. Yeah, or, I just or I'll just say, I'm "Yeah, sips. it was me." Sorry, it stinks. Like, what? What can I do? <laughs> I, it has to. It's better out than in. I, I always me say too. that to my wife. I always say, it's "Better out than in," and uh, she says, "For who?" But yeah. this is <laughs> true. <laughs> um, but um, but yeah, no, I just I just go for it. I find also now that I'm a bit older, if I say like if I'm out at an event or something like that, and like I, I drop something on the floor and I have to bend down to pick it up. I'm farting. Like it's, I can't okay, even help yeah. it. You know, like it's That's just an old man it's sneaking thing for out. Sure. Yeah. Just uh, down. yeah. I just, I think it's just best to just, just if you, if you feel it coming, just, just let it out. I, I feel like holding it in is more dangerous because it can just cause either a bigger or louder one at a more unexpected yeah. time. Yeah. 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 Do you take about a million photos only to let them sit in your phone or get lost in your files? All the damn time. Yes. Me too. Do you know, we go out somewhere and my wife is like, hey, quick, take a picture of this. And sometimes I'm just like, you know what? I'll do it. But we're never going to look at this again. We will forget that this exists. Well, don't worry, Sips, because I have been using the Aura frame. Uh, they sent me one. They sent one to you as well, p They did. And it is really, really cool. There's a little app and you can put all of your uh, photos photos on there right and you could actually share it with family as well so i shared it with a bunch of people in the office and everyone put in pictures and now we've got this little digital photo frame oh my God. in the office and it rotates really nice wholesome photos of uh, all of the Yogscast folks and it is super super nice let me Man. tell you something I, I i got mine we have uploaded so many photos to this thing it's ridiculous my kids when they have dinner now it's on the dining room sort of on the breakfast bar they sit and they'll look at it and they're like oh look i was like so little and all the holiday pictures and everything they absolutely love it and I've, i get a notification every time a photo gets uploaded and it's quite sweet because i'll send mrs f a picture on whatsapp from like when i was in singapore and then i it's the guy get the notification she's put it on the aura frame so i know that the kids are seeing it and it's just nice like all these holiday stamps it reminds you of all this these happy times that we've had i i, I absolutely love it this is a hand hand on heart 100 percent p flax recommendation i love it well there you go carry on so from now through black friday and cyber monday you can get 50 dollars off uh the best selling frame uh, by going to AuraFrames.com slash Triforce. They are the lowest prices, Aura Frames. A-U-R-A Frames.com slash Triforce. Get one now. It's a great gift idea for Christmas. Do it! There you go. Merry Christmas. All right. This one's from Connor. He's in the army. American army by the looks of the picture. Uh, let me just check. Yep. Looks like the American army. Uh, um, also, been... your microphone isn't anywhere near your ass, so it doesn't tend to get picked up on <laughs> Mine stream. Is. No, uh, I mean that's the thing. But if you're if you have thunderous farts, it'll pr pick it up in the background. It'll right? pick it up. Yeah, yeah it'll pick. Oh it up. yeah, I don't think I really have. Again, that that's more likely to happen if you're saving them up, though, as well. You know. Yeah. yeah. Right. Just have you ever had a fart that just goes often. on for a really long time, but yeah. it feels great, and you're just like, "Holy crap! I didn't know my body could do this." Like it just—you like almost don't want to move. It, yeah, to like it's going and going and going, and you can—you're still farting, and you can already start to smell the stink. Like, oh man, that's amazing! I love wow. that. <laughs> God, that—that that is a rare, a rare special one. Moving Sorry, on, this on. is Connor. I'm in the army, have been for a long time, started as a medic, and now is a parachute rigger. I enjoy listening to y'all when able to lay out parachutes to pack the next day after everyone's gone home. Jumping from planes is a good job, mate. Cutting to the chase. You'd love to hear if us, if us three had to be in the military, uh, and we, 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 we have to be in it, right? We've right. got to pick our jobs. Right. What job would we want in the military? It could be any branch, any job. I would want to be a drone operator um, <laughs> stateside. <laughs> Stateside drone operator. So you're yeah, just in the remote States. drone right. operator, and I get to sit in an office in like uh, I don't know Fort Bragg, Pennsylvania, or where it's nice and safe and air conditioned, ideally with access to some sort of cafeteria and right. uh, good Wi-Fi for my. And have a high school gaming. board there where you mark off your kills yes. on a board. I'm sure is a thing they do. I think that's got to be the high best five. The, uh, the military next job now. I reckon that's probably the safest. Uh, I'd say morally, it might be the one that would well, cause the you the most stress as well. later. It's the most interesting, like as safest and most interesting. Because, like, don't get me wrong, if you're like uh, a cook or something like that, that's probably pretty safe, depending where you are. Having said that, though, I wouldn't want to be a cook on a ship. 
on a warship. I wouldn't want right. to be uh, like a cook in a field kitchen, like on the front or something like that. You know, like those could be dangerous. Like, what if you're well, the the, the kitchen sinks? is not on the front. They don't they don't ship it up to the front no, line. No, the kitchen is at the back. They gotta be in the con- rear. They with gotta the be. Gear they gotta be close to the shit, like a little bit, right? Like uh, I guess yeah. those guys gotta eat too. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I, yeah. I I think drone operator is a very good shout. I've yeah. always wanted to be a submarine captain, even though I hate submarines. I played a lot of U boat. Too much responsibility. And- and you know yeah, what? It would be great during non-war time as well. You way too much formality as well, right? Like you, you're like King Charles is like coming to to visit your sub sometimes and stuff like that. If you're it's a captain. lovely submarine, lovely <laughs> submarine. Where do the torpedoes come out at the end? <laughs> <laughs> at the end. Yeah. Where Where do you keep the corgis? Where do the corgis? <laughs> the submarine corgis. He must mm. be he must be in charge of corgi somewhere. <laughs> Perhaps so, if one is looking for I a would, job, I is there it, an opening in the corgi department? It, it's too much responsibility. Too oh. much responsibility. Yeah. I think like being an admiral, like a fleet admiral or whatever, like you know, like you yeah, got you're right. You got to rub like, shoulders I, with some real knobs. Like there's also, no also I am claustrophobic. Everything's, everything's I am claustrophobic. Everything's so tight so. in that submarine. It'd be like it would be like the problem with your sink compounded in everything. Oh god, you're you right. Mean, everything is yeah. squeezed right. Now up I think the about edges. it. You're all right. What I'm if out. you're in a das boot situation as well, and everybody down there is just sweating profusely? It's getting and hot. You can hear the, the hull depth is charges. creaking and oh stuff. Oh my god. No, yeah, thanks. you're right. What was I thinking? Yeah. All right. Uh, I'd like to be one of the lads that sits in the nuclear silo and has to turn the key at the same time it's, as the other lad, uh, and then you push the button. Yeah. Right. And so that's quite a lonely job. What as about well. nah, you got that other lad? What about that like that? What about the guy in that's Catch Twenty Two? Who's the? It's not Major Major. It's the um, you know, the guy that sets up the the cooperative. He's like the logistics um, like provisioning yeah. guy. That would be pretty good too, right? Because then you're really quite far away from the shit. You're just like managing, you know, supplies and supply chains and all that kind of stuff. But like, what about being a sniper? Nah, too rough. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's just like you go crazy out there. You're on your own. You know, no, you've got your mate. They're in pairs. You got to piss in, in a jug most of the time. Uh, that's like, true. You probably just got to poo and just like you got to poo in a jug. Throw you can't, it away. You can't. No, you can't because. It, You'll get like the hunter tracker force of the enemy uh, team will will find your poo and be able to see how old your poo is. The <laughs> last thing you, you ate, you they, 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 the they use all this information to triangulate where you are or where you could be, right? And they'll probably yeah. find your ass. That's a good point. No, well, they'll definitely find your ass if you leave a poo behind. Yeah. So <laughs> I would say no, no to sniper as well. All right, all right. Well, I'm out of ideas then. Drone it is. I don't know. Like I think there's there's a lot of interesting jobs. I mean, driver is a classic. You know, that's, can be dangerous. That's like though. dangerous, I'd say. Very dangerous. Well, but then again, not if you're not driving the tanks. If you're just no, dr- no, driving the in supply the logistics. They, they go after logistics they go after all the time. All that stuff. Yeah, because that can. Like, I was reading just this morning about this artillery piece they've sent over to to Ukraine to help them defeat the dastardly forces of Putin's uh, army. It's the M seven 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 artillery piece. This thing can fire like twenty five miles. And land this shell with an accuracy of within sixteen fucking feet. Yeah, that and that it's like a GPS guided shell. So it's got a little fin stabilizing. It can adjust itself slightly and just fucking land exactly where you want to put it. Most of the people getting killed in war for a long time now. It's been artillery. You're at very little risk of actually being shot. Yeah. You're much more likely just to be blown up. So if you're a drone operator in Pennsylvania, you ain't getting fucking shot. Or, or I don't know. I got, so I got bombs on I got big ass man titties. Like uh, if sixteen feet, like that's a that's a hundred percent hit on me. <laughs> they target me. Do you know what the the U.S. Army this year? They recruit about sixty thousand people every year to replace the people who are leaving the army. They don't, not, you know, they don't lose that many troops every no, year. No, no. People just leave the Turnover, forces. Yeah, of course. But the requirements to be in the U.S. Army are: you have to be of certain fitness, and you have to you be prepared to be all that you can be. You have to be prepared to be all that you can be. You can't have a criminal record, which is a big problem because you get a criminal record very easily in the states. Yeah, they dish out and a three lot of strikes, fucking, you're out as well. Like, yeah, a lot of people have been to prison in the states. It's a huge prison population, right? Yeah, yeah, and. You have to have a high school education and be able to pass the the intelligence test to get in. And of all the people out there that they're trying to recruit, all the people of the correct age, only 23% of them are currently actually viable candidates to join the armed forces. And 
of those, an awful lot of them have no interest in joining the military. A lot of young people nowadays, you know, they're not seeing it as like this great thing. They're seeing it as this deeply politicized thing, which in many ways it is, because uh, you might be going off to fight a war that you don't support. And whilst a lot of people will say, well, I'm doing it for the good of my country, I've always thought I would want to do it because what if we went to war with a country where I was like, why the, what's the, why the fuck are we at war with these guys? This is ridiculous. Yeah. But you have to do it. You You'd don't get to make that choice anymore. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah. This is uh, an email from a lad. Uh, this is interesting. You were talking. This is very funny. A little dark, but very funny. You were talking about changing names last podcast episode. I don't know when this was, but yes. I was born on the day the Twin Towers fell. Right. And I was coincidentally named Osama. Right. My, you my, are joking. Seriously. He has sent me a picture of his birth certificate, <laughs> believe it or not, as proof. I mean, I mean his- as far as I can tell, it is a fairly common name. It's not like- Well, I'm sure it was. Yeah. Um, maybe. But I guess probably not so much now. Yeah. Because it would be kind of tricky. His ch- family changed his name. Parents changed his name to Tariq three months later because they didn't want him to be no, yeah, bullied. Understand. Or people yeah. to think he was named after him because, of yeah. course, that would be fair enough. Sure. You know? Yeah. So his family still calls him Osama or Sam for short to this day. I have evidence if you don't believe me. I believe you, Tariq. I believe, I believe you. you. And there it is. There indeed is his birth certificate. Um, you think? Uh, do you think that um, when uh, when Jeffrey Dahmer was caught, that there was just like a big downtick in babies named Jeffrey at the time? And similarly, <laughs> like people like you change got name changes quickly and stuff like that. It's like that Seinfeld with the uh, what was the name of the guy she's dating? Um, God, what was it? They go to a baseball game and they make an announcement over the tannoy for this guy, and it happens to be the name of a, a fictional serial killer in the show. And Elaine convinces him to change his name, and they fall out over to, yeah over that's really to early seinfeld that's like season that two i think yeah i think i think it might be a little bit later because i watched it the other day it might be f- season four or even five because it's around the time of the episode where george converts to latvian orthodox because he fancies a woman that that's early on too but this is elaine still has a roommate when that happens but she's just not you remember elaine's uh roommate that's always chewing gum early on yeah she still yeah. she still has that roommate with uh, the serial killer guy i'm pretty sure but All right, I'm going to check. It was interesting. It was um, season five. I know, guys. Was it actually this season stuff, five? Yeah. This, yeah. this stuff does happen even today, like with the Russian Ukraine war going on. I've noticed a couple of people have changed their names from Russian names to more Americanized names. But like um, Chip. Or, or completely Americanized <laughs> names. Chip. Yeah. Um, yeah. Chip. So I, I, I don't know whether that's to do Chip and Dale. with what's going on or not i'd probably not actually it might just be coincidence but i have i do notice it happen and i think it's uh, you know something which people do try and fit in still with their the culture that they're you know moving to or intend to be part of to try and as a part of a way to fit in and leave their past behind but also just to make their lives easier you know not Mm. be judged as either a refugee or a a foreigner because there's still a lot of racism and xenophobia out there about like immigrants and stuff and that's one that's uh, that's the one have a quiet ordinary life you just don't need to deal with this shit and people aren't that attached to these names i know some people are like oh god my name is meaningful and people gave it to me and blah 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 but fucking who cares like you don't it doesn't need to you know if if you're going to be bothered if it's going to bother you every day like change just it. don't fucking yeah, don't change change, you it. don't have to put up with it you really don't what so, bothers yeah. you about this podcast sips well it's the, my one big regret that we of all the things that we've solved and we've helped people with racism <laughs> and <laughs> xenophobia is the one it's like it's, it's, the, it's like yeah. our white white whale it's on right? the list it's, a, it's elusive. on the list we <laughs> just yet can't to, to solve we can't figure it I out see. we haven't cracked the code just folks, yet folks we're working on we're it we're working. working on it every day we're working um, overtime we we're are. working for the weekend. So, you you better believe it. Like we're yeah. not taking any breaks. We're we are not. We're getting it's full it. yeah. full ball. Yeah. We're going. Yeah. You mentioned Jeffrey Dahmer, didn't you? I did. Sadly, yeah. So I did not very want to next, mention him. The very next email happens to be about Jeffrey Dahmer. Believe it or not, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> can we, before we the, do the, this, la- uh, it'll have to be the last email, realistically. But before we do why? it, why? Well, it's 44 I, minutes Okay, in. sorry. Maybe there's time for a few more. I just wanted to give you guys a quick update on my health. I had my biopsy oh, yes. result back and it was all clear. Uh, there's Huzzah! There was no malignancy in, inside my prostate, which is nice news. But the bad news is still got to get a camera down my dick. Oh, Next God. week. Yeah. Well, we've had an email about that as well oh, nice. from a lad who's had it done if you want to hear. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be very interested to hear. Yeah. All right. Let's, let's do the Dharma one first. Okay. 
Uh, I'm Joe. Did I ever tell you guys about my idea for a sitcom, actually? (laughs) I'll just skip this one. Dahmer and Greg. Like, uh, it can be like a reboot (laughs) of... uh, (laughs) But, like, instead of Dharma, Dahmer uh, comes back to life and moves in with Greg and is constantly trying to uh to fuck him like uh but greg is like unaware what's going on sort of thing <laughs> i don't know i could think it could right. work it's maybe poor taste i'm sorry yeah maybe the name the name is what did it for me most that's all right <laughs> sorry anyway oh, that's all right shit. this is from uh jimmy i uh, just wanted to Where email him to ease ease sips his worry about the camera down the johnson he's going to have right i had this done when i was 20 years old He's now 24, so he obviously made it. And when I describe it, it will sound like one of the worst experiences ever. Okay, hold on. Okay. The camera was like a really long fire lighter. Yeah. And the anesthetic they used barely worked. It just acted like lube. Oh. They have the camera feed on show, and they invite you to watch as if you know exactly what was going on. Right. It looked like a fleshy version of the intro to Doctor Who. (laughs) 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 I can't wait. I'm going to be you. That's the noise you make. That's the noise you make. (laughs) 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 You're just like grinding your hips. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God. Right. Well, he says. I'm glad you guys can laugh about this. Uh, well, it's all right. It's all right. Listen, let, let Jimmy ease tickets. your consent. Yeah. Let Jimmy ease your consent. It was quite uncomfortable at the time, and I came out walking like Liam Gallagher. Right. But it barely lasted longer than two minutes, and there's barely any trauma to the downstairs region. By the end of the day, you'll forget you even did it. Oh. But fortunately, as I'm a listener of the Triforce, I have a tiny penis. So maybe your experience will be even less painful than mine. Very good, right. Jimmy. Yeah, Very good. They've got to get the extra long camera <laughs> to, yeah. uh, to really fully get into... Uh, good good one, Jimmy. Yeah. Enjoyed that. Navigate my Very shaft. Very funny. You know? uh, so in regards to the Dharma one, this was Joe. Just wanted to know uh, if we felt that all these shows about serial killers, sometimes they happen very recently, uh, and the families of the victims are very much still alive, and in some cases the court proceedings are still ongoing. Yes. Uh, and do we think, what do we think about the morality of that? I think society, Western society especially, is obsessed with true crime and uh, serial killers and, and all this stuff, right? Like, there's mm. a, a big market for it, so it's never going to go away because it it gets ratings. Morally... Um, it it's a tough one because for all the people who like to watch it, obviously there's people affected by these things still who are still alive, who are traumatized for life. They've lost loved ones. They themselves have been a victim to it and stuff. And it and it's it's hard. It's a it's a hard pill to swallow for sure. Right? That you know some people are consuming this as entertainment. Uh, yeah, almost at their expense, or not even almost, definitely at their expense. Uh, yeah, and um. It's it's just a tough one. I mean, I don't. They're never going to stop making the documentaries. I'd prefer it to be done as a documentary, factual documentary, rather than a dramatized version Agree. of events. The dramatized version of events, I don't tend to like um, because it's just it, it just seems like kind of like poor taste, right? Yeah, like uh, like a, a factual documentary that is well produced. I I would I would watch. To, to gain some knowledge and understanding and try to develop some empathy for like the, the, the victims and stuff, you know, not that it would help them much, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I think morally that's, that, that, that's a, a better form of, of, of media surrounding I wonder, it. I wonder that's if my, we're obsessed with it because anyway. we, we feel in, in the West that we have a very safe life. Yeah. Uh, I think most people would agree that we have like all these institutions and systems and we work and have worked very hard over the centuries to to improve our crime solving techniques and how we catch people and making people safer and everything. So in a way it's a, it's a way of dipping out of that safety bubble into a world where you might get chopped up and eaten. Yeah. And it's it's kind of uh it's the same as being scared, you know, riding a roller coaster or watching a scary movie because you're moving outside your comfortable Western life where you basically have all the human needs that you could imagine met yeah. for most people. Yeah. And then you're suddenly being like, ooh, imagine if Jeffrey Dahmer ate you. It's, it, it, it's, it's, it's weird. just so much worse than that with Dahmer, though. Like, if you, if, if you read about the, the things that he was doing to people and stuff, it is. It, it it it's so horrific that it's not worth recounting. And I'm surprised. I don't understand that, why, I'm yeah, surprised I don't that understand. they did 
uh, dramatize it and and in well, some ways fictionalize it as well. at the same time, well. we are constantly exposed to this in fiction, and then it's worse and worse and worse. Everyone loves watching these horror films where yeah. multiple people are horribly murdered and chopped up in incredibly gory ways, and everyone's watching some dramatic film about some child abuser or something yeah. terrible going on, and 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 I think when it's a real thing that happens suddenly it adds this note of extra even more excitement into it I, it's just a natural evolution though in a sense of people's what people want right like pe- people are interested in this horrible stuff and and always have been and it, since ever you know sherlock holmes and agatha christie people getting popped off murdered and horrible doing horrible things to each other yeah. poisoning each other and and yeah i mean obviously like it is weird because he was real. And I think that that's just more titillating, right? For some, for some, in some ways for, for people. I think people don't quite realize that he was real though, in a sense, like, and especially when I, I, I do think that Netflix has become murder porn, but it's always been that. And is that really bad? Yeah. Like most people do, even though they enjoy watching these murder things, that doesn't mean they're going to go out and do a murder. It doesn't mean that they are taping these people as role models. I don't think anyone, I, th- I think, I, it, I, I think actually, there, there I think it is bad, people but like that, I, I, I probably still will watch some, most, most of it, depending on, you know, what, what, it, what like the, depending on the, the subject matter, right? Like I, I like I am interested in, in, documentaries around you know true crime and stuff like that for sure like like a lot of for other me people. the interest is like the reason i liked mindhunter the drama show mindhunter which was amazing i think it was david fincher brilliant was it was more focusing on how they caught these people yeah and i love i love seeing that the change in systems and the change in approaches yes and the the sort of inventiveness and it's always just in any of these large institutions and systems if there's a change Institutions are very slow to change yeah. their approach. It's always a few brilliant individuals who come up and say, this is how we can solve this. This is this is how we can fix it. And I think that's really fascinating. That's the side of it I find more interesting. Yeah, I think, um, I, think so. I, I, I like. Yeah, I think that's maybe, maybe it does stem from I like that. the crown for that, that as well. You just saw like a, a gradual evolution of the way that institution operates, right? Like based on key sort of milestones throughout, especially throughout, you know, because the the focus is on the the queen's reign. You know, there is Indeed. definitely this idea of the antihero. Obviously, for a long, long time, we've had the asshole antihero, right? Where it's with a heart of gold, right? That's this such a trope in everything yeah. that you know every everyone's favorite character in everything is that dick who is actually a good guy when it really matters or whatever. Like Wolverine, Um, grumpy, unpleasant bastard. Like uh, like John McClane in Die Hard. Yeah, I guess. Everyone in everything. Like, uh, yeah. Well, Keanu Reeves wasn't an arsehole in The Matrix. Um, Yeah, he was. No, I suppose. Spider-Man wasn't an arsehole in the Spider-Man. He was a different kind of asshole. Spider-Man's a bit of an asshole as well. How's Spider-Man an asshole? Not like, he's not like a rude, like, belligerent asshole he's just kind of like a but wet I think, asshole okay. you know like i think that i think that the, the, the <laughs> i think that it's obviously in mainstream stuff and that's not necessarily the case but but i think certainly on the edgy edgy of things we've definitely got more anti-heroes and i think that the danger of making dharma into some sort of you know in like heroic nah, figure. i don't know if it, i don't know if it goes that far i haven't seen it and uh, like you know apparently well there's loads of them though it's not yeah, just yeah this is the thing it's not just one show i mm. feel like netflix has just become the dharma station it feels like <laughs> in a sense. you are like got like uh the um what was the one that we that we watched or, or maybe i don't know if flax watched it the night night stalker night crawler one yeah yeah, we talked about this that actually because really I think, yeah, I think that's we watched we, it around the same where we kind of time. About yeah. This before. Yeah, yeah. I think this is just again the next, the next. That was Richard Ramirez, wasn't it? That yeah, was just that's a, right. they, they were kind of glorified it a bit, kind of reveled in some of the details. A in little ways bit too much. Thought, What's going yeah, on here? Like, can we just cut tell to- you what I watched yesterday that I quite liked was. Well, I didn't like it. it was but um, Guillermo del Toro's Cabinet of Curiosities, right? Basically. He kind of waddles in um, at the start <laughs> and says, "Oh, so it's 
a strange place with the, the it's world, now, isn't, isn't it? It is a and, strange um, place, the world. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make and, your place. <laughs> and so the first, so obviously the, it, it's a sort of um, horror anthology where it's like eight episodes and each one is slightly different. And uh, the first couple were pretty ropey. I think they just basically get worse and worse as they go through. God. But... Um, I don't know. They held my attention decently. At least the autopsy one did, and it was super gross, super gruesome, um, but and qu- quite creepy. But obviously, because it was sort of Halloween this week, I felt like I wanted to watch something. And I, I, there were a few things that were recommended on various things, mm. and I was like, I, "This is the one I ended up watching." And I thought it was okay. So yeah, like a, I like short stories because then I feel like short stories are a great medium for. Netflix, I want uh, yeah. another, another I want some more Buster that, Scruggs. It, like because tw- twelve episodes mm. of the same story, it tends to be dragged out way too thin, you know. And I think that they can giving them forty five minutes to get their thing done is like usually they, they're on. Let's have a they're good on story. A timer. Yep, exactly. they, they don't have too much time for wank. And well, um, I tell you what's a good show if you haven't seen it. Andor, I'm absolutely fucking loving it. Everybody's Best saying it's Disney's great. Done with stuff. It's yeah. so good. Yeah. I so, do so, hear so that good. Andor is worth watching. You haven't watched it. Yeah. Watch I haven't it. watched it. I haven't watched the Lord of the Rings one. I haven't watched yeah, the Game right. of Thrones nah, one. Was boring. I haven't watched um, any of the Marvel stuff. I like the Game of Thrones Man, I haven't Marvel watched shit. Good. I did watch Malice at the Palace though, which was kind of good. That was good. Yeah. I think you should stop watching first Basketball Married, Bachelor, whatever, and g- give a go of some of these shows. There's some really, really great TV out. Of them. <laughs> I know. I, I kind of like. Uh, I, I like to like offset watching sort of like uh, you know documentaries with just some trashy reality tv you know like I, I, just watch some good drama i'm just saying give it a go i give know it a go I and know. get back to it it's, it's hard it, it some of this stuff we can get into like we watched severance and we loved it like we, we watched oh, that such better a call show. saul we we watched uh, the 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 most recent season we yeah. watched it all like quickly it's really good but uh, we're, we're a bit picky, you know, like, I don't know. Getting more right. so as well. Like, there's well, just, if, if we're just so fucking saturated with stuff to watch now, right? There's uh-huh. We've never had well, so much stuff to watch and there's never been less to watch in some ways. You know? Oh, like, I don't know if that's true. I, I, I don't know. I I, I'm flicking stuff, through right? stuff and it's just like, yeah, that probably is good, but I don't feel like watching it. I, I don't want to watch this. I don't want to watch that. My wife's getting all mad at me because I was just like flicking through. Yeah, like, I think oh, that's I you. I think that's a you thing. I guess so. Yeah, TV I don't know. Thing. I, I just like get exhausted by like all this stuff to watch. Yeah. You know? But it's probably just a me thing. I don't know. Maybe it's... Yeah. Uh, Maybe it's because I got the uh, the camera and my dick thing coming up, and I'm <laughs> maybe a little worried. That's fair. About it a little. <laughs> All right, well, let's not, finish on a, on a complaint email. All right, okay. Because I love. Oh, these. brilliant! Uh, Do the voice. Hi- uh, I work as a medical device distributor across Pennsylvania, New York City, and New Jersey. Uh, this means I have a lot of driving to do, so I figured I'd re-listen to the entire Triforce catalogue. I've hit episode 126, but there has been one thing that has slightly annoyed me. There are two stories, the bath plug story and the spy house. The inconsistency that annoyed me is that you all reference these as stories that have been spoken about millions of times, as Triforce does have a history of speaking about things before. (laughs) On the update of the Spy House, where we find out it has been abandoned for a while, Pyrian mentions, for long-time Triforce listeners, I have an update on the Spy House. However, there was only one mention in passing of the Spy House before this. The bath plug story was only mentioned the one time that Sips told it. However, from that point on, you all mention it as if it's been told hundreds of times. It's yeah. just really? a funny inconsistency no, that no, makes me hate. No, no, honestly, it's makes such a hate boring and love you guys. story that it probably feels like you've heard it a million times. Well, right? I think also the thing is sometimes I do this. I talk to people about stuff in the office or on streams or with uh, with 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 my parents or someone like, like do you know what i mean and then by the time i'm telling you guys about it i assume i've already told it before right. you know and you used to talk about spy house on your stream all the time that's the thing I, I think because i spoke about it on stream i carried that into i must have spoken about this before on the podcast but it obviously according to this chap I've only spoken about it once, so apologies. Well, that gives us carte blanche, then, in that case, to talk about those two things, again, which we are going not to do Indeed. now. Indeed. We'll save um, it for another time. <laughs> another time, another place. A little treat. A little treat for well, you Well, that's all. reassuring that we're not as senile as we thought. Yeah. Um, Good news. Well, no, I think that's even worse. 
That's that's well, we thought we'd spoken about something a bunch oh. and we hadn't. We'd well, mentioned it's good it to once. Be careful, though. That's true. It's good to be careful. We're just careful podcasters. What can we say? There was I saw I went into your stream the other day, P Flex, and mm. someone there's there's like a load of clips and one of them made me laugh so much. I was like <laughs> what was it? <laughs> I think it was like old bumbling fool, <laughs> senile, old old cunt. Yeah, fucks up this idiot that does an idiot move or something. Yeah. it was like a, a string of like insults. <laughs> That's my view. It's person. I like that. And I mean, oh. there, there's a list of commands. It's it's exclamation mark senile followed by a oh. number. I think we're up to 26 or 27. They're unbelievable. They're unbelievable. It's just huge doing very stupid You ever get things. those moments really where you boobies. do something really dumb, but then you blame chat for it? Like you, you try time. to reverse it on them? Like uh, Every time. In a big mm. power move? I love yeah. that. It's that's my, my, my I think move. that's human fault. instinct to instantly try and turn the blame fault. away from you. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm sure you, when your grand grand handled your your sink, she was blaming something else um, and not her own wow. yeah. turning it the wrong way or whatever. It's yeah. not my cac hands. It's, uh, it's this yeah. stupid like the sink. movie body parts. <laughs> Had a <laughs> hand transplant, for <laughs> convicted murderer. <laughs> uh, my, I don't have He's control a, over these. For a convicted sink breaker. <laughs> uh, yeah, a, a really bad plumber. <laughs> oh, That's whose hand it was. Jesus Anyways, Christ. Right. lads, let's wrap well, it up because that's an that's hour. We're going to take the cat to the vet. All right. Well, good well, luck. Enjoy and, the rest um, of your peace on earth, time. all the rest of you, and um, see you next time. All right. Bye. Farewell. Bye. Bye. Bye.